If you don't have a lot of money and you want to blow up, then you need to understand how to predict music industry waves. And that comes from paying attention, understanding what makes each wave happen, and then moving fast enough before everybody else takes advantage of it. You don't want to be last. So we're about to break down exactly where the industry is about to go and how you can flip that information for yourself so you can always be ahead of the game. I'm Brian Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary. Rap is failing and country is the next wave. That is what multiple people have said, including the rapper by the name of Russ. We're going to get into our thoughts on this whole situation, but that's not the only wave in the way we're going to speak in this particular interview. If you already have your thoughts, this isn't what the whole thing is about, but it's a good lesson to understand, understand the industry wave. So let's start here. You know what it is? Four years ago, every CEO was signing every SoundCloud rapper and their cousin. You know what they're about to do? Sign every country artist and their cousin. And guess what? The country artists, like we talked about before, they'll make enough money to cover the loss of the rappers that they're still fronting. Mm. And so it doesn't matter. It'll always look like a rap is still doing its thing. Country's booming, yeah, but rap is still crushing. Yeah, but y'all are signing the country artists. He, he goes on to say, I know because I got relationships, mm-hmm. right, with people who are in these label systems, in I this infrastructure, him. right? And I think with... Well, he starts, before this, he goes like this. We have heard everything. Oh, you're also sliding on an op? Heard that. Mm-hmm. In fact, I heard it and it was better. Mm. You're selling drugs? I heard that. You're, 50 did it and it was way harder. You're sell- yeah. Right? So he starts there. And I think that's part of why a lot of people misconstrued everything he was saying, right? Shout out to Jelani. I see Jelani said country music already been popular, so it's not the next wave. I think I know what he's saying, but I I think you're missing what he's saying here. Uh, It's a lot of people saying, oh, he got it wrong. African music is the next wave. It's like like basically Afro beats, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of opinion going on that I think it's causing people to miss the facts that that Russ is speaking on. Yeah. And when we talk about industry waves, there's multiple elements that cause industry waves. Yep. You can be popping, there could be a sound, it's cultural movement, and every cultural movement doesn't have to be c- commercialized. There's a lot of local bubbles, and it's like, oh yeah, I remember in my scene there was this special time, and then it fizzled out. And only your locale is aware of it. Mm -hmm. It didn't become this thing like the way Trap hit Atlanta, you know what I mean? And the way Zaytoven and Gucci were doing what they were doing, that didn't have to like permeate throughout culture and every the 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 way it has. Yeah. But it took signings and label infrastructure to back it. Yeah. So rewind. How do we even get to this and think about this as a topic? Like me and you have been seeing a lot of these country artists pop up. A lot of them. Like black country artists specifically. Mm-hmm. So this is when we get into the conspiracy <laughs> of sorts. All right. The, you can call it a conspiracy, but really it's just observation. You know what I mean? Conspiracy isn't founded in, in the level of truth and expertise that we have. You know what I mean? I, I, I take that as a <laughs> as an insult a bit. But 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 le- legitimately, if you look at like all these black country artists that have been popping up, right, and being shown on these platforms, the same platforms that we pay people to market on, uh, like, or people pay us to market on, Mm -hmm. right? So we know how you, if you got a post on this page, oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh Okay, we see a post on another page about these black country artists, and now it's multiple black country artists, and now I'm seeing this person that I've never seen, a regular celebrity post about this same five or six black country artists and another set of uh, celebrities post about these same six black country artists. And they being lazy about it. They're using the same copy. Same similar caption, copy. Sim- yeah. Very similar caption. Very similar copy. Very, very interesting. Same group of like six to nine artists. Very, yeah. very like said, interesting. Conspiracy theory had definitely, definitely went off. And this <laughs> and this is where we get into industry wave. Like mm-hmm. what happens, right? You have the natural culture that can take off, and then the industry goes, Oh, that's interesting. Why don't I invest in that? Somebody invests in, in that, and now everybody else is trying to get behind it because they're chasing a wave that's already popping, right? It can happen that way organically and then somebody invests in it because they see it's an opportunity, it takes off and the rest of the world follows. And I think that's what most people are used to and and understand from a like direct standpoint. Mm -hmm. But there's an alternative where 
we know that there's enough raw material there. It's not a wave that's necessarily taken off, but we know that the timing is right to push into something. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or something is already going away that we don't like, and we have to find a solution to go along with what's happening, and this is our solution. So how does black country fit into this? Because Russ said country is the next wave. Mm -hmm. Now, he already alluded to country was late to streaming platforms. You know, he basically said that. Like, that's something we've known for a while. Hip hop was very early. Um, historically, hip hop and uh, R and B audience audiences, especially hip hop though, are first to the, the to technology platforms. Yep. So that means you couldn't really capitalize on country artists to I mean country audiences at to the full extent at the beginning. Right in the since like 2018, maybe 2023 is like now you in full blown momentum on the streaming platforms. Yeah, and we can truly lean into the country audience. Y'all really exist. Y'all are on there. Y'all are a significant part of the um, the streaming, and that's what we start seeing. Yep. Oh, country is taking over hip hop, right? <laughs> so it's there. Now that we see that people can. Um, we already hear gripes about like how it's harder to make money in like a hip hop, right? Than a country. Cool. And if we know that that's the next wave. What does he mean by the next wave? If I'm a label, I'm signing artists to support a next wave. Any wave needs financial support on a commercial scale. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not signing hip hop artists, if I'm not supporting hip hop artists, if I'm not signing dance music, or whatever type of music and supporting it on a commercial scale, then for all intents and purposes, that wave is gone yep. from a commercial yep. scale, right? Yep. Like, yes, it came, it popped. It doesn't mean that it's not culturally relevant at all. And I think this is what people are missing because they're getting too caught up in their feelings and their love for specific genres, et cetera. It has nothing to do about that. This conversation, what Russ is talking about is not that. He said, I know people who, who are at these companies, and yes, hip hop will always be around, but these people are going to be signing country acts. If they're signing country acts, that means they are supporting financially and pushing country acts. The yep. same way y'all talk yep. about all this music, and everybody likes to talk about, like act like all popular music is bullshit. The same way that y'all like to talk about, well, this music sucks, and the only reason this music that sucks is theirs because of you know the labels mm -hmm. and the Industry is pushing it. You're the man. The man, whoever that man is, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is that. This is a version of that. Like, what they are pushing now is going to be country. Um, there's a plethora of reasons why. Uh, they might be moving around, on, along from hip-hop. That's another discussion. Maybe, Ja'Cory, you got strong thoughts on that. But if you look at all the pieces and just pay attention, the artist are popping up. You keep seeing black artists, uh, country artists pop up. You keep hearing, seeing posts about, well, country has always been black, right? You keep seeing all these things. Next thing you know, Beyonce drops a country song, song yeah. supposedly project coming. Yep. Right? And who better, right? To lead the revolution. To, loo to lead the revolution, <laughs> right? Then Queen B. All right, we got hit them from the, the bottom, we hit them from the top. Like, Beyonce is there to take those bullets, the first person over the hill. She can take that because it's not going to knock her off. She Beyonce. And she got everybody paying attention. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Y'all not supporting? Like, Beyonce? Beyonce's Beyonce. Like, you, you don't think you don't think Lil Nas X was already the martyr for that cause? Not a, not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> like Lil Nas X well, did what he did, but he, but I, but Lil Nas, Lil Nas X created context for this though. That's okay. That's fair, right? That's fair, because yeah. it's early enough. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's close enough historically where a lot of people remember that moment and remember, like it became a question of racism or not, right? Yeah, yeah. So bam, that context is there. So people are looking, whoa, what happened? what's wrong with this Beyonce stuff? How come it's not, you know, being accepted? Because there was a lot of question of racism going on before. Yeah. So now we got a super microscopic um, 
you know, magnifying glass on, on, on this Beyonce situation, especially since it's being Beyonce, you can't turn her down. She takes those those bullets or whatever, protects everybody with the Captain America shield, and now everybody else done got in the door. Like, she's making way, like, point blank. She's making way. Interesting timing. Very. At the same time, you're seeing all these black country artists pop up, and at the same time, you hear you're hearing all this consistent education about how country started, you know, with black people, mm-hmm. right? And then on top of that, you're hearing that hip hop, like rap, is failing a little bit, right? In the way that they they contextualize it, country yep. is the next thing. So it does a couple things because, well, shoot, who are we gonna place replace these rappers with? Black country artists, because we can't get as a label. I can't. I can't get into country. 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 Country already is locked down. That's a le- legitimate closed community. Not like not open to everybody, but they have a very strong handle on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true old school style gatekeeping going. Old on. Old school. They got legitimate ga- gatekeeping going <laughs> yeah. on. In, in, yeah, in country, legitimate. You can't just like make. Oh yeah, we here now. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and done revolutionize and this is just what it looks like. You can't do that in country. Yeah. There's some people who got some things to be said, right? And feel how you want to feel about that. I think there's positives and negatives to that. Yeah, you yeah, know, definitely. Because yeah. people like to focus on the negative aspect of that, but then those same people get mad when they feel like their genre gets diluted or, you know, taken advantage yeah, of. That's, country does what rappers say they wish yes. rap would do. They they exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you can you know look at it either way. <laughs> so since we know we can't just like bogard up in here and be like, yo, we here now, and and all of a sudden take over the game, should we gotta bring in these guys that the country's artists or the, the regular country, they're not gonna really invest in or un- understand it anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's a, if we want to just like connect, you know, the cons- conspiratorial, you know, conspiracy like dots, you know what I mean? Like that makes sense because what, what do you say? All right. If you want to increase the size of the marketplace or oh, no, if you already dominate the marketplace, you got the only way to grow is to increase the size of a marketplace. Or if you look at the other way, if the marketplace is already being dominated, the only way to create room for yourself is to also grow the pie. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so that's what it feels like is happening. I don't know from who, why, where, or whatever, but you know, the right team with the right resources, that would make a lot of sense. I would I would try to do something like that. It's like, dang, how can I get in? All right, I'm gonna bring in these black kids. I'm gonna switch them into the country artists. Not that and by the way, not to say that these uh artists aren't legitimate country artists, uh these black artists. Okay, so, so I could all flip, so flip it this way. I'm gonna start investing into these black country artists that I was ignoring before because I was looking at these other black artists that were into hip hop. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and take advantage of that opportunity. And that's what a lot of this time timing artistically is, to be real. Um artist popularity, legitimate artist, like a lot of their popularity is predicated on the timing not necessarily them taking advantage of commercial trends i want to drop a quick note for anybody who has a fan problem and not just any old fan problem but the type of fan problem that we encountered after helping a lot of artists go viral have a lot of success get a lot of streams but still not being able to know Who exactly are my fans? How do I reach them? How do I actually leverage that to sell merch, go to a show? Because that's where Spotify leaves us without knowing who our real people are. Same for social media. If you've had this problem, I'll tell you how we've been solving it at our agency for a while now. And the pro version is just now being released to be accessible to any artist or manager out there. I'm talking about Forever Fan. A lot of the campaigns and successes that y'all have heard us talk about on this channel have been powered by that software that's made finding and understanding your true fan simple so they support you with their pockets. Because we all need a little money in this music thing. And now they're making it available to our audience for only $1 at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels, no labels with an S at the end. And you got to put in the code, no labels. All right. Now, look, 
the DSPs, the social media platforms, I think they've shown us how much they care about artists for a while now. So at this point, we can all play naive or actually do something about it. Bet on yourself at foreverfanmusic.com slash no labels. And again, put in the code no labels to get initial access for only $1. Let's get back to this episode. Like Russ brought up a probably one of the best examples when he mentioned the the SoundCloud rap wave, right? Like you think about those artists at the time, a lot of them existed before the boom happened, but it took kind of all of them starting to make momentum for it to become like a little, well, I wouldn't even say a legitimate scene before it to, to become mainstream. Like you had to have your exes and your little pumps mm -hmm. in order for you to have like your, you know, like your smoke perps and, and wh whoever you would kind of consider to be a, a yep. little bit further down the funnel. And every wave is like that, right? A, a, a more recent music genre, two actually I can think about is Afrobeats and Hyperpop. Afrobeats is a new, you know what I'm saying? Any Anybody that is a, a fan of the music could tell you like it's not it's not new, it just became mainstream the last mm -hmm. four or five years. And it took the collective effort of a couple artists, right? You had like your Burner Boys and, 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 and you know what I'm saying? A couple different other artists kind of adding to that pot to make it like a legitimate movement. It went from being like, hey, there's a handful of successful artists in this genre to like, oh, now this is a legitimate movement. And so the country, what's interesting about the country one is, you know, we talked about this, a lot of the artists that they are highlighting now are artists that like have been around for a minute, like two of the bigger ones. I see uh, Shabuzi and then I think her name is like Tannerell or something like that. Tanner. Uh, Tanner, yeah, some, I, 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 I know I'm messing it up, but, um, like those two artists are artists that like I personally have seen at least over the last like three, four years, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've seen them kind of grow. And like you said, a lot of that is timing. Now, when you read that comment earlier from Jelani, right? And he was like, yo, country music has been popping. I think, I think, I think maybe I understand. I understand, I think, where he's coming from and then what you're kind of saying, right? Like, so it's like country music has always been popping there's, there's probably not been a decade in our lifetime where there hasn't at least been a handful to of, someone who loves yeah, country, country and understand that country has never not been here yeah it's, it's there yeah but the argument against Jelani's point would be when is the last time country music has been culturally relevant mainstream wise and then when's the last time country music has been relevant in black culture those are two those are two Really important notes to think about. It's you know the that? same. <laughs> it's the same argument, and this is why I say people have to not get caught up in like their own bubble or their own like affinity for whatever they're doing or something like that. Because it's the same argument when people say R and B is dead or whatever, and then people be like, "Oh no, nah, man! Like y'all just being lazy. Y'all, y'all don't understand. There's so many great R and B artists out there. Da 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 da." No, that's actually the point. The fact that I have to dig to go find them is the point. When we talk about trends, when we talk about the wave, popular, we're talking about what's the stuff that that's in people's face mm -hmm. that they don't have to go look for. Mm -hmm. You know about that person and you don't even listen to that type of music. And next thing you know, you hear that person en en um, enough and maybe you hear another few people and now you're starting to listen to that type of music and they're making your genre bigger right like yeah. that's what the wave looks like that's and that's why again when people complain about where r&b is it's different today to know that anyone from a ari linux to october london to a, a Giveon or whoever or whoever you go down the list to know they're there versus like 2000 i don't know what it was maybe like 18 or 17 when LMA what booed up was just out there and everywhere. It wasn't like you then you go back to the 90s. Well, R and B was out there as a whole. It was like 20 R and B songs that you just go outside and hear everywhere the same way LMA's booed up song was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, yeah, I'm an R and B fan and I know where that um so I know that this music is there. And if you want the investment the capital pushed behind you, your people, whatever your genre is like that goes to that goes along with being the commercial wave, not just from what you look at culturally, but more importantly, in this case, not judging the quality of art and what should be, 
but the way from a business standpoint where all the executives are like, hey, this is the next wave. You should be post like country music is on the rise. You better find you a motherfucker to invest in. Like that's that's what we're talking about right here. Yeah, bro. And I even say what made me realize it is there is a really popular traditionally urban leaning record label that I know of. Mm-hmm. That has recently signed the Country Act, mm-hmm. and like I said, labels traditionally are urban music leaning, rap, R and B, all this stuff. And I remember just sitting in a meeting when they were talking about him, and you know, at first I was like, oh, maybe he got like a Killer Roy vibe, like he kind of that land, because I didn't know he was a country artist. Where I just you know seen like you know white kid on the Zoom meeting, thinking about who, what label I'm here consulting with. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. This guy's here, and I always remember. Um, hearing like one of the execs on the call say like, yeah, you know, we're excited about signing him because he represents a really interesting journey this label is about to take. And at the time I didn't really understand that until I I saw them working him and a lot of them working him was, like I said, the same way you hear rappers talk about going to labels that don't have rap artists and they had to either figure it out and sometimes they didn't fuck up. I'm watching that happen in real time. I'm watching, like I said, an urban label try to figure out how to break a country act. Now, they were able to do some things that typically work for rappers for this artist that that did push him in that direction. But then there are times where like I'm I I worry for him where like, all right, you have to use rapper tricks to break him, but you might push him too far away from mm. the country audience. But the, the bigger point is like that said a lot to me. It's like, man, here's this label that has had success with this type of artist, still has success with this type of artist. And they feel like, yo, if we don't hop on this country wave, we gonna miss out. You know what I'm saying? Which mm-hmm. I think says a lot, you know, because there was a point where a lot of labels stuck to their guns, and it's just like, if you were the, the country label, all you did was country. If you were the R and B label, all you did was R and B. But you can't do that no more. Though. Yeah, you can't do it no more. Yeah, you're right. Like yeah. the before, like, as you go further back, <sighs> labels were more independent, not independent. Not necessarily purely independent as we think about like indie today in that way. Independent in choice. Independent in choice because it was less monolithic. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So much of this stuff was still evolving. Like commercial music is still a relatively new industry in this way. Like pre nineteen fifty, like commercial music wasn't like a thing at this level. Like Michael Jackson was the king of pop. Like pop was basically being created as he went along you know what i mean that yeah. was, like it, he it, he's not the inventor of pop music but it like it wasn't fully solidified so then you continue to evolve music and look at these industries and then hip hop still new like you look so back then like you think about the regionalism right you're speaking to a region mm-hmm. now all that stuff is gone and a lot of these labels that started as a region, right, in their own region, and then later start to sign to a label or a major label, right? Now they're answering to them. Yeah. So if you're answering to them, you don't have the same choice because if I'm, I don't know, insert label and I started on the West Coast um, with some, some rappers or whatever, like back then, if I don't decide to hop on a country wave, it's probably the right decision, first of all, because, shoot, man, that's not my audience. I don't understand that. Why am I going to do that? I could just stay true to who I am and keep moving. But 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 it only affects me and my label, and I probably have enough money, and I'm making enough yeah. money. But yeah. when you start to have these labels signed to other labels and, and everybody's kind of tied back down to a major, you make that decision today, and now – Somebody higher up is looking at a balance sheet and they're like, yo, it's not that much profit coming in on this West Coast uh, traditionally hip hop label or something mm-hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, it's just like, ah, right, well, up, cut off that budget. Up, that means cut off those people, <laughs> which is your job that you decided not to, to go country. This is what it looks like to not go country, right? So it's a completely different, like, game in, in that matter. And I think before we go like deeper into country, I want to play the second clip that goes into a similar thing. It's, it's not country. It's not country. But 
if y'all are still listening, which I hope y'all are, like y'all need send this to your managers, send this to your 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 your, your other artists, homie friends. They need to hear this conversation to understand the waves that, that are happening on the other side of the waves. Y'all look the cultural waves. I think we get that as artists, as people who are in it. We touch it, we feel it, we love it. But the business side of the waves and how they can impact, stop our waves and, and fuck up the money that we think we're about to get is understanding this other side. Check out this clip. And hopefully you get, I want y'all to guess in your head, like what the point is before we start talking. Y'all ain't gonna wanna hear it from me, but the girl rapper wave is over. Damn. Damn. Oh, come on. Just telling you what it is. I'm normally a few months ahead with this stuff. Sometimes a few years ahead with this stuff. When you say over. Why do you say that? Nigga, you just yeah. said it was the, the girl, the girl, the girl rapper wave is is finito. How you just think- All right. First of all, Joe. Like, I'm a few months ahead. I I feel it. To say I'm a few years ahead sometimes, to me, you just wrong, bro. Like <laughs> you, you just wrong and then and broken finally clock, right. right twice a was it broken <laughs> clock right twice a day or something? You know but, but real talk, he about to say he's about to say something that however you feel about the girl rapper wave and what he just said, the wave being over, is about to tie right back in. And this is the part that people miss because people think he's hating. Oh, and what's a man doing talking about women's business and 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 things like that. <laughs> If you listen to him, it's going to have nothing to do about how he feels about women artists or anything like, about that, uh, like that. Check this out. Okay, so. You just said a couple of weeks why? ago that it was lit. I wonder why. No, I'm, I said the cream rises to the top. So Lotto shall remain. She will. Uh, Flo Millie shall remain. Got it. Uh, Rhapsody will always be there, but she wasn't really a part of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, but all of that, go find a girl, send her to Columbia, Get it done. Put her in the studio with fucking Mike Will or any one of them niggas. Uh-huh. All of that planting the girl in the scene, getting the record, and it taking off. That wave is over. That wave is over. What did he just say? He basically just said there was a playbook that became popular. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a woman. I'm going to put her in the scene in a specific way. Probably get a sample because, boy, that was a huge part of the playbook. To pop the women artists off in this last, you know, three, four years or whatever, and then sign them, get them signed to a major, and then keep running that play. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. That's the play that he's talking about. People are so focused on the artist, right, that they're seeing as a result, the wave that they're seeing as a result in, in popular culture. But he's talking about, yo, no, it, the people who make these plays happen. The reason that it rises to the top in that way, they're going to stop investing. That's all it goes back to. The money, the effort, the resources, the support system, and the gatekeepers that be are investing in one thing at this moment. You see a lot of it, right? And a lot of times people get fooled on the front end to thinking that this wave is the wave just because it's the wave. People are driving it. Nah, man. Nah, man. Yeah, bro, it's been a... Been a lot of money lost on on BBLs and studio sessions. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. And you know, I feel like it's 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 one of those insights we get as a marketer. But any marketer that's ever been brought like one of those artists, you know what I'm saying? Like like we we all can empathize with each other there and understand where Joe's coming from. Because I, I I always thought the same thing, right? So there's a point where you start to see like if you pay enough attention you can see the moment when public sentiment starts to dictate where the future of music is about to go you start noticing that certain concerns of fans you know maybe you would see a comment on a post a couple months ago and it'd be 10 people that liked it and you see a similar comment five months later and then 2,000 people like it you know what I'm saying like sometimes you can in real time see like public perception change around certain things and if you think about what Joe said right the, 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 I, I call it, you know, bad bitch rap. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, I think it's the genre of female rap he's talking about. Cause you know, it's crazy to say like a whole gender of genre. Is, is, and that, that is and that's, yeah. that's what he's alluding yeah. to more specifically yeah. too. I think because of that, like not lack of specificity, people, so that just yeah, gives more people, it, yeah. yeah, it gives more people room to just say, oh, you attacking um, females. But yeah, it's, it's that specific genre of rap. Mm. The, the, the BBLs, the I'm scamming, um, dudes, or like I'm a boss, like the nigga that ain't safe. Yeah, that whole <laughs> specific 
way of doing things, that's what's being exploited at this period. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I think there was a time where, you know, you think back to when that really started to take off. I attribute the takeoff of that to, like, around a time when, like, City Girls started taking off. That's when I think it No, became, no, that was it. Yeah, like, so... You think about that, it's like, all right, man, you know, that's pre-pandemic. Everybody feeling a lot more carefree and we all outside. And, you know, a lot of that demographic now that, you know, is still here now. Listen to that, like most of them are probably like 23, 24 mm-hmm. back then. Now they, you know, late 20s, 30s. Dang, bro, they over the, they over the hill now? They're about to be, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Looking at the wall, bro, you know what I'm saying? And so, but I think that's what it happens. Like the core audience starts to change. And if you start thinking about things within it, right, there's been the argument about quality. That's been big since the genre popped off. We've seen, you know, um, there's been a couple of notable like surgery related deaths with women in the last couple of years. Yeah. You know, it, it became a big issue. I think when SZA got her BBL, it made it started a really interesting conversation around like you know body dysmorphia within music. Like, and you start you, like if you watched a lot of these things happen, you could literally start to see public perception go like, uh. Eh. I don't know if we want these these women that kind of represent this because one, you're kind of ascribing a lifestyle that like 99% of us are, are never going to get to see. And then two, there are a lot of dangerous elements to that lifestyle that mm-hmm. we weren't privy to that now we're starting to become more aware of. It's just like street Missing rap, you body. know what I mean? Yeah. It's like how many kids will listen to street rap thinking like, oh, this shit all fun and games. And then, you know, their first time going to like, a show or something where they seen shit get real, like they completely changes the way they look at it. You know, so mm-hmm. we we got to see a lot of that happen in real time. And so that's the other element of a wave being created or dying that I don't think a lot of people think about is a lot of times it really does has to tie back into like what are the people going through in, in, in real time. I remember watching this YouTube video not too long ago. It might have been like fashion theory, like Matt Pat's channel, some one of those channels. But it was a video about like about how you can track recessions and the the state of a country's economy by like fashion trends. And oh talk, yeah, and, you know, yep. talk about how like mm-hmm. you know when you're in a recession, like jeans get more popular because mm-hmm. they're a lot easier to come by, they're more durable. Mm-hmm. Versus like when the country's doing better, you know, you start seeing nicer fabrics like satins and silks and stuff start to come back into play. And it's like that. It's really interesting because like, like I said, like the, the social the social status of the people start to dictate what the next wave is because the people are starting to look for something that either represents what they feel like they're going through or looking for something that represents an escape. And the hard thing for artists and creators and, you know, even business people is you 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 know people are in the middle of their line. You just never know which way they're going to go. Like, do they want an escape or do they want representation? You know what I'm mm. saying? And a lot of times, if you can figure out which one of that is going to be the bulk of the mark, and you can jump ahead on that, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you'll you be good. The flip side of that is if you jump on the wrong side of it, and it goes in the opposite way, you, sure. you, you fuck. You know what and saying? you got to understand <laughs> which escape is it, yeah. right? If it is an escape. Yeah. Because it's always functional, right? Escapism is functional for the people who need it, right? And then... Yeah. You know, the genes or the, the representation is functional or just like, hey, this has real utility in my life. This is what I can afford right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This is going to last. Yeah, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think, I don't know, man, you got me thinking of just like the, these BBLs and stuff. <laughs> like at, at the time, man, I can't wait till BBLs are looked back at like Jabos. Like, what do you mean? Like, I remember when we had those <laughs> like that. <laughs> you see them Jabos in the thrift store? Yeah, like, hey, them, them BBLs, man. You just just see silicone in the bin somewhere, man. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think the, mar- <laughs> the the market is like there's more and more people that are realizing like it's, it's doing more damage than good, and like people use it as like a symbol of. Mm, Freedom. Like yeah, freedom or empowerment. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we all know. Like in on a real human level, that is c- more of a cover up. We all we all know that, right? So like, not to get too deep into that direction. I think <laughs> what you're saying, right? And look, you know, I got daughters, so I feel real strong about this shit. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but like, but what you're saying, like a lot of that sentiment, and because people are looking at artists, right? That they already believe are like beautiful. Yeah. And then do something to them. So like, and I think that's when it really started to become a thing. It's one yep. it's one thing where it's like someone's doing something that you might feel like 
hey, well, they needed to do a little something or whatever. Yeah. But then you're looking at somebody who, like, objectively, superficially, stereotypically, right, is a 10 or a 9, and then they're doing stuff. And that's when and that's when it just clicks, right? So there's an alarm, mm-hmm. like, all right, something's wrong. Yeah, something's off here. It's yeah. like, you're doing this, you're stereotypically, you know, good looking, and you're like, 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? And I know you see the comments. Yeah, like, like so So what is this for, right? And, yeah. and then you, and that's when you start realizing the yeah. impact, just like you mentioned the kids looking at guns and, mm-hmm. and all these other things. And you mm-hmm. see the market going that direction. There's a sentiment. And the labels, the infrastructure can invest in these things for as long as that sentiment isn't beyond a certain level. Once that pushback becomes, eh, and people are starting to get tired of it, all right now we got to go strike another nerve like oh we had that nerve right there we i don't know why i want to say this so we <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn it down from where my mind goes naturally <laughs> but we <laughs> but we um stimulated that nerve you know what i'm saying and it was all exciting it was all great but beyond a certain point there was a uh, diminishing returns yeah so we had to find a new nerve yeah you know what i'm saying to, because most of the money is made in the beginning aspect of the ex, uh, of, of the excitement, you know yeah, what I mean. 100%, yeah. After a while, let me switch my mind again. <laughs> <laughs> it it doesn't have mm-hmm. as much return and, and, and value, you know what I mean. So um, so yeah, like the like the big part about this is why is it so valuable for artists? And I think this is the the biggest part that. I don't want people to miss if the marketplace is going somewhere and you're able to read the marketplace, you can be in a moment where some, the marketplace is moving towards you, which means it's time for you yeah. to bag up. Facts, yeah. Right. Cause you know that they're coming. Everybody is invested in this and we do this in other industries. Like when it, um, when it comes to tech, uh, whatever, like if you're dealing with like VCs, like there'll be things 2024, at the top of the year, investors are being told that these are the trends and this is where the market is going. So they're all putting a certain portion of their investment in play to invest in that particular market. Yeah, And it might be way bigger than any other year because of the trends and forecasting that they're hearing. Yeah, because of the collective push. Because of, And, bec- yeah, and yeah, then yeah. there's a collective push and becomes a self-fulfilling pro- yeah. prophecy at some point as well, yeah. right? It doesn't mean they're not all wrong. Like, you know, th- people went crazy in crypto. But look at how much money went into crypto and got lost on crypto. Right. What if that money could get lost on you, though, bro? Yeah, that could have been you, right. <laughs> it could be you. And it makes me think about the, uh, that hot chicken conversation we had a couple weeks ago. And we was talking about all the restaurants, like, hopping on the hot chicken wave yes. at that point. And yes. it was, like, where that came from. Or, like, even the chicken sandwich crave that happened a couple years ago. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's literally just, like, somebody says, hey, this is going to be the next thing. And this is really important for artists to understand, man, because I think because a lot of y'all never get the chance to talk to executives, you don't understand the exec brain. A lot of executives talk to other execs, so they're sharing this type of information with each mm-hmm. other. Yo, did your label tell you, show you your, your I don't know, chart metric data and show you that X, Y, Z is going up? Yep. Now that exec is like, damn, this is about to go up? All right, well, the the, the 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 VP at Sony told me that. The VP at you know, Atlantic or whatever told me that. I keep hearing it from all my exec friends. I need to start paying attention to that. And then, like you said, they start actively working on it. The, the rumor spreads or the, the, the data spreads. Now they all are actively working on it. And what might have been a rumor, like you said, now becomes true because you literally have millions of dollars of resources and teams and ingenuity being put towards almost making sure this thing is going to happen. And as much as... You know, we sometimes like to be like, no, nah, the labels are wrong. They can't move the needle like that anymore. Yes, the fuck they can, bro, because it mm-hmm. don't take a lot to make it happen. Like, if you, if you have every major label pushed towards this collective trend, that could easily be a couple of hundred to a couple of thousand artists in this particular particular trend being developed and, and being primed to be the next up. We give it that year to two year gap before the superstar comes out, which all it takes is one superstar to come out that wave to cement it. Mm-hmm. Every wave, every big wave that you can think about, Really only needed one superstar. You know what I'm saying? Hyperpop, they just needed Eric D.O.A. 
You know what I'm saying? The, the SoundCloud wave, they got X and, and Lil Pump. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you look at most of the waves, you only need like one to two good people to break out to completely legitimize the wave because the top that rises the rest of the artists makes them visible enough to where the untrained eye just thinks the shit is just booming across the board. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, man. I think like, like I'm not, I, I, I see where it comes from. I, I can understand where the journey to country is, is kind of coming from. Um, and even some of like the logistical and cultural things that would make a label want to want to push for it. Um, but I think that to Russ's point and into your earlier point, because of what because we know about this collective push for country music that is happening and is about to happen. If you are someone that's never really understood how a wave has been created or or is, is kind of manufactured in that way, this is probably gonna be the, the, like we probably won't get another like real time case study to watch for another couple. Like if country ends up being truly the next wave, that means it's gonna dominate for the next like three to five years. You know what I'm saying? So you want mm -hmm. a real time case study about watching how a, how a, how um, a movement's momentum is kind of built out and structured in, in that way from ground up, now is the best time to pay attention and mm -hmm. really watch it. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, next example might not come along for another two, three years. Good minute. Yeah. And like you said, to really get the wave popping, all you need is one star. Yeah, one. All right. One star, two or three good support acts, and then just another, a bunch of other artists trying to do it. Right now they're using um, a manufactured star in country, Drew Beyonce. And by manufactured, yeah. I don't mean she was a star because um, like of she's manufactured and to be a star in her place, but like in the country space, that's manufactured. You're not natural in that particular space. Yeah. But that only is buying some time for a true star to emerge yeah. in that particular country genre that they're trying to build up and they're making way on. Perfect example. A new star emerged August 12th, 2019. Do you remember that? Lil Nas X? No. The baby? No. Wait, like we we're not talking about country specifically. We're just talking about in general. The Popeyes chicken sandwich. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you already had the incumbent Chick Fil A, and then you had this Popeyes chicken sandwich pop up out of nowhere. It was out right? of nowhere, yeah. Pop up out of nowhere, went crazy, and after Popeyes chicken sandwich started going crazy, everybody got chicken sandwich. Literally, everyone had <laughs> chicken sandwiches. Everybody. And I remember literally at the top of 2020 watching one of Gary V's um it was like a marketer marketing of the now or something. He was interviewing a lot of executives and it was like an executive at KFC or um and she was saying that everybody, all of her competitors were about to drop new chicken sandwiches. Crazy. McDonald's, KFC. Uh she went down a list. Like, no, this is going to be the thing because that one star emerged, Popeyes. Yeah. And because that one star emerge to make it hot a trend oh somebody can challenge a chick-fil-a chicken sandwich all of the investment was being poured into that space on chicken sandwiches yeah. artists you are the chickens be a chick be a chicken or you sandwich. could be a burger <laughs> or you could be the farmer dealing the chickens i don't care but just know where the money is going are you a burger are you a chicken are you a deal pickle? I don't know. <laughs> but that's that's really how this works, right? Just knowing that the money is coming your way or not. And if it's not coming your way and you don't want to flip and stay true to whatever you believe your art is, then know that the money is leaving the room so you can adjust accordingly. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. And, and you asked me something earlier too, right? You, you, said, you said something about like the timeline of country becoming relevant you said maybe i have some ideas on it i've been thinking about it this whole time and i think i have a rough timeline in my head of why we were why we are what we are today like y'all right, follow me here bro all it. right 2018 right we get Lil Nas x old time road mm -hmm. and we get the babies walker texas ranger mm. two heavily country influence you know, yeah. influence songs mm -hmm. right two songs that Albeit it was kind of like a joke within black culture at the time, I still think made a large majority of young black culture at the time at least aware of like country music and country. Open time. to the vibes. Yeah, open to the vibes, exactly, right? Both of those artists break through, they kind of fall back. 
And then we found, and then, and then you know, I think in the middle of that, there's this artist named Shibuzi, who I give a lot of credit to kind of like bridging, like actively working on like bridging like that country and kind of like rap. I mean, I know there's been like other people like Jelly Roll and stuff, but I'm talking about specifically in black culture, I give a lot of that to like new age to him. Um, Cause okay. he's been- yeah, he's In been, black, meanwhile also, there's been a lot of black country artists that have been getting leg, legitimate country artists shine too mm -hmm. as well, where it's not in black culture. And that's the differentiation yeah. you're making with the, the Shibuzi. Yeah. That's a lot of what we're alluding to in this conversation of what's going to rise. But there's also been, I can't even think of everybody's name right now, but male and female country artists that are black that have been getting shine within country, country artists, uh, country culture already. Yeah, exactly. So 2018, Lil Nas X, the baby. Roughly, I'll give the Shibuzi, I want to say 2019, 2020 was around the time I became the most aware about him. So let's just throw it out there as that's when he started getting his breakthrough, right? That's I 2020. Um, I think it was 2021 or 2022. I'm trying to remember what year. It was whatever year we did our TikTok report. So 2020. I remember that being a, a, another report that came out that started talking about country music fans' migration to DSP. Mm -hmm. and it was talking about how like it grew like a, like maybe like five to ten percent, which wasn't crazy compared to the other genres, but for country specifically, that was pretty crazy at the time. Like damn, like five ten percent, five to ten percent of the marketplace is jumping ship to DSPs. So now the major industry is starting to become aware of what Russ said. Hey, mm -hmm. the country music genre is open to being a part of the new age in a way that we didn't think they were ever gonna be. And stay with me here, man, because it's about to get crazy. This, this was, this was, I think it was gonna get crazy, right? That's 2020, 2021. 2022 or 2023, it might have been last year, that one country artist went viral for being thick. And she went viral on black Twitter. That was last year, yeah. Last year. Well, she went, bro. Yeah, she had a BBL. B I don't think she had a BBL. No, nah, that was a super BBL, bro. <laughs> I don't think she did, bro. That's her what made it more interesting. Her response to it made me feel like she didn't have one. I mean, you can look it up, bro, but I don't, I don't like, think Like, don't, don't get me wrong. There's definitely some, like, thick, thick ones out there, but <laughs> nah, she had a BBL for sure. So 2022, 2023, thick country artists go viral, right? bringing more attention back from black culture into the space with new rises in the financial sector of it because of the streaming and the vinyls and all the new stuff that was adopting. And then we get to 2024 Beyonce and you know, from there the rest of the story writes itself. I think those are the steps that led up to where we are today. Lil Nas X, the baby, whatever that country artist is that went viral, you know what I'm saying? And the artist like Shibuzi and I, I can't think of her name. I keep feeling bad, man. Uh, Cause I keep forgetting her name, but the, the woman I tried to reference earlier, I think those are the steps that led us to where we are. And from a label side, you know, we talk about like investments um, and, and what's safe to invest in. I mean, you know, the reality is a lot of the cultural things in country keeps the artist safe for the most part. Um, it's a genre where I do think the investment is a little bit safer because you know that even if the artist doesn't break through through the newer the newer means, they still have potential to be successful within a, a, a more traditional music system. And I think that that's a that's a type of stability and safety that you don't really get with any other genre. Maybe rock True. music, maybe classical, might be the other two I could kind of think of that might have that same kind of safety net, but it's not a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not a lot of investments you can make where you're like, okay, even if you don't like blow the fuck up, you still should be okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I think all that plays into it. Bro, she ain't got no BBL, bro. I promise you. She refused to tell people if it's real or fake. Only people with fake booties were filled. <laughs> and like either that or she got like them um <laughs> them uh them uh, spandex leggings from TikTok. Oh uh, yeah, the TikTok leggings. But she got on different pants, man. That's not anyway. <laughs> anyway, like I everything you said, correct. <laughs> Except for the reference to to her butt, bro. Like that was <laughs> that was a, a unneeded distraction, but you chose to lie, bro. So no I'm way. A, I mean, I really just really more so want the people to understand how many cultural revolutions have been started because of ass. Like you'd be surprised if you really look deep dive into your history and just look at you know enough pieces of the pie or the puzzle. <laughs> so many cultural revolutions have come because of just the, the right cheeks at the right time. It's crazy to think about. What about the left? Maybe the left too. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, look, we, we, we you know, it's a classic to say that women women drive marketplaces in many ways. Um, <laughs> so, at the end of the day, like again, this whole conversation is understand how culture moves things, understand how infrastructure and resources move things, how those things can intersect, but how those things can chase behind one or another, and the culture that you're aware of. At the top, the tip, top, top is oftentimes more than not infrastructural support, not just the culture, because this culture always happening at all times in different yeah. places. And there's a lot of culture that we don't get um, become aware of going on in different places yep. until that infrastructure gives you a certain level of support. Right. Like you said, Afrobeats has yeah. been Afrobeats. Yeah. But now you're seeing the infrastructure here and it, it being put in place here. So it's up to you to pay attention to that, understand that, so you can know when it's your time to cap and when it's a recession yep. or when a recession is about to come so you can cap beforehand, all right? So if you don't have anything to add, do you? No, nah, that's it. That's all I got. This is yet another episode of No Labels <laughs> Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace. <laughs>